boxing legend Lennox Lewis, one of only three fighters in history to have won the heavyweight championship three times. And wow. without any doubt, uh, the greatest heavyweight champion this country has certainly ever produced and possibly the world. There you are, Lennox. That's a good big up for you, mate. Yeah, I was surprised at that. You usually a wind up. Well, for those I who don't know... I thought you were going to call me Sleepy Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Lennox and I competed in a, uh, a show in America called Celebrity Apprentice. It's actually perfect for the job because, really, what uh, Mr Trump wanted you to do is actually go around to your rich friends and actually get money from them. And I know he's got a lot of rich friends. He's got more rich friends than I do. <laughs> so. What was he like? Just give us an insight, because we hear ad nauseam, frankly, uh -huh. about his time on Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah. What was Piers really like? And mm. what was he like when he was with Donald Trump? He was annoying, yep. uh, a butt kisser. Enough about it... Trump, what about me? <laughs> 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 no, uh, uh, boy. I tell you what, he got up everybody's skirt. I mean... <laughs> well, OK, we probably yeah. should clarify that. Sorry, I'm going to the choice oh, of players there, Alex. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a... Do you mean up everyone's nose? Yes. Yeah, yeah. OK, right. Uh, oh and God. especially the American gangsters, they took everything so serious. They didn't like it, did they? Yeah, they didn't like no stick from Pierce. What we did actually, you think, we made I, a good team, actually. What did you think about Donald Trump? Uh, you know, I couldn't understand. Everybody was really nervous about this big boardroom. And then when you go in this big boardroom, it's like a boardroom that could fit like 50 people. Mm. And there's only one person behind the desk. And everybody that comes in, even Pierce, mm. because I was watching him, he was like, his face was getting red, he was a bit nervous. I wasn't nervous. I think it was just the, a, the athlete in me. Yeah, you know, I'm ready. For, cool. I'm ready for this. Yeah, I'm cool. What was interesting was, if you'd said that that Donald Trump, the one that yeah. we saw night after night for hours and hours on end, would be president one day, we wouldn't have been as worried about it, I don't think, as many people now are that he is. Because he, he didn't... He wasn't as combative in there or as kind of deliberately polarising, was he? Has he changed, it? do you think? Yes, he has. I think he's loving the job. I was actually in the, uh, the White House the other day and, um, you know, he loves that job. Did you see him? Yeah, I did. Really? What yeah. was that about? Um, uh, uh, just uh, freeing uh, a man that was... Um, charged with uh, a crime that he didn't commit, mm. basically. And did you and get he, him he, free? Uh, Jack Johnson, yeah. Jack Johnson oh, that's got, right, that's right. got a, uh, yeah. a piece of paper saying that he was free. I think it was on two uh, presidents' desks before that, um, for years and years, that he committed a crime when he was, oh. you know, And Trump has signed it off, is it? He signed it off finally, so he's... And when you saw him again you at did the a White Kim House... Kardashian. Did you, yeah. You must have had a laugh about the old Apprentice days, didn't you? He just asked me a lot of different questions about that and said, do I remember? And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really talk, talk about them out in public, but, they, you know, he remembers. Now, uh, we've got several chess sets here. The reason for that is that during the long... one over there, by the way. We were trapped yeah. together for 18 hours a day for about six weeks. We actually became, we became good mates. And we played a lot of chess. You've been taught by your mum. And uh, <laughs> I thought I was good at chess. Right. And we played 40 games of chess in six weeks. How many and you times beat did me he beat you? 39 times. <laughs> Every time. What I did you do in the 40th game? He is good at chess. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think he cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he beat me. How did you get so good at chess? You know, being in um, training camp most of my life, mm. what is it to do? You know, nowadays, there's, you know, you can play video games, but... Back then, it was more of a mental game, you know, mm. being quiet, being focused on, on your sport. And chess is that war game that you need to play before you step in the ring. It's really mental. You've got a project, haven't you, um, which is helping youngsters who might be at risk of going into crime to yes. get them boxing. Um, is, that's a project, I understand, that's been running elsewhere in the world. Are you bringing that to the UK? Absolutely. And is chess going to be a part of it? Yes, uh, chess is a part of it. You know, you, you, if you teach a kid how to play chess, you know, he's not going to go out there and rob somebody or do something uh, bad because, you know, he's thinking like five moves ahead. Mm. Oh, what can happen if I take this and put this in my pocket? What's going to happen to me? What my, what's my mother going to think? Do you think kids have lost focus? Uh, I think it's hard to focus mm. uh, nowadays. There's so many different things uh, that gets them, you know, focused on and video games. And hyperactive, game. actually, I think, and, yeah. and not really concentrating. What's think... Piers doing next to me? He's you know what? He's putting on gloves. I've heard, right. but I've heard my... enough of Lewis's nonsense. But my, right. my charity is called League of Champions. Yeah, Lennox Lewis, League, League of Champions. Champions. Yeah. Right, all that, I'm ready, on. I'm ready. Go on, go on. Remember we used to do this? Yeah. <laughs> 
and we do conflict resolution. Put back in the way, Lewis, you big... Come on, you big blue... It's like you're swatting a fly away, yeah. isn't it? Then yeah. <laughs> and notice I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> this is brilliant. It's like martial arts. We could do with some conflict resolution, though. That sounds quite a good yeah. idea. <laughs> and uh, we teach them how to be winners. We teach them how to set goals for themselves. And uh, we talk about life. And we teach them, you know, respect, which is, you know, the main thing. So um, not, on, not only boxing, but that. I, I, um, it sounds fantastic. I also just love the fact that you took absolutely no notice of Piers. <laughs> well, he was ducking yeah. and diving. He was yeah, running just, away. Absolutely I brilliant. I wasn't scared one no bit. No flies on you. <laughs> um, great to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Oh, don't forget, yeah. uh, September 6th, yeah. me... At the Indigo, we're going to talk about boxing and take you down memory lane. And your life, right? And my what life. What was the yeah. greatest moment of your career for you? Oh, man, there was too many great moments. I think one of the greatest moments was in Africa when Don King actually came over to one of my friend's uh, weddings and he, was, he basically wanted a WBO belt. So he came over there and offered me money and, you know, I, you know, I took obviously took the money, but I wanted a Range Rover as well. Mm. So <laughs> he, had, he had to he had to buy me a Range Rover. Oh Big up Saxon. <laughs> Lennox, you're a great guy. You were All a fantastic right. champion. Good luck at the O2 with your big your big event. Thank you. Uh, come out, make I'm it a you. date. Everybody, come and check it out. Yeah. yeah, it's a great life and one definitely worth listening to. That is an inspiring body image. If ever I saw one. <laughs> I'd love to be like that. Mind you, I wouldn't have you won so many like apprentices that. if I'd been like him. <laughs>